Hey guys, it's Susan, and today we're going to play with fire and make a simple bar ring. Hey guys, so today we're going to do some soldering, and I'm going to show you how to make a simple bar ring with some round 16 gauge wire. It's really fun, really easy, they're great to stack together with other stack rings, and I really enjoy them, and I kind of like mine. I made this one yesterday. So, supply-wise, all you need is some 16 gauge round wire, so that's easy, right? And then you're gonna need some basic tools. And I've got them divided up here by basic tools, metalworking tools, soldering tools, just to kind of separate it out for you. And uh, if you love soldering, we do have a basic 101 video just on how to solder, where I really go through a lot of these soldering tools in more detail. Uh, as far as our basic tools are concerned, we're gonna have a flush cutter, of course, and a flat nose plier, a wire straightener. I've shown that to you guys one other time, I think. And one of my favorites is the wrap and tap. Now you don't have to use the wrap and tap, you could also use a ring mandrel instead. It just kind of depends on what tools you have in your tool supply. And I am definitely gonna be using my flat file and my rawhide mallet, as well as I may or may not use my bench block. I always like to have one handy just in case. And then I have a little tool over here. This is a, this is a miter vise and I love to use it. I'm gonna show you guys how to use it but it is not necessary 100% for this project. There's other ways to do it. Uh, you do want to wear some safety glasses when you are soldering, and you also will then, of course, need your soldering equipment. And over here, right where I've got my two bar rings that I already made, I've got my soldering board, which is flame retardant. I'm using paste solder today, a soft paste solder that I'm using, a sterling silver paste solder. And of course, my sterling wire that I showed you earlier. This is a solder pick. And this is just a copper tong because I'm gonna be reaching, picking things up and reaching into some pickle with that. Uh, this is flux that I'm gonna be using. Flux is what makes solder flow. I am not using, I do not have to use this today because paste solder has flux already in the mix, but I always use flux, okay? That's just one thing about me. I always use flux, keeps my metal clean, makes it a lot easier later. So if you don't have it, you don't have to use it, especially if you're oxidizing your piece, but I always use it. And then this is my torch, and this is just a simple soldering torch. It has a safety on the side, or safety right back here, a, a continuous flame button, and up and down, and I'll kind of demonstrate that for you guys when we get to it. And then I do have some liver of sulfur because we don't have any finishing tools here today, so I'm just gonna show you a quick way to finish this ring if you don't have a rotary tool or anything like that to polish your your sterling at home. So I think we're about ready, so let's get started. Don't forget, if you love this video, go ahead and ring that bell so you can be notified every week of our new videos. All right, first step in making this project is we're gonna get our 16 gauge sterling silver wire. And of course you guys can make these with other gauges, but I think 16 is about the minimum, the thinnest that you'd wanna do it with. 16 gauge is great for a ring that you wanna stack. And I'm going to take my wrap and tap plier and I am just going to start forming a basic ring shape. So I just have an overlapped loop there. Go just a little bit farther. And then I am going to use my ring mandrel to size my ring. Now remember, if you do not have a wrap and tap plier, you can just wrap this right around the mandrel and do it that way. It's just, just as easy. The wire will spring out a little bit, so you'll have to start a little bit smaller than the size you want if you do that. All right, so I want a size seven, so I'm gonna go up just a little bit farther than that. There we go. And then I'm gonna take my flush cutter, and I'm just gonna cut both sides with one flush cutter, and you can see I'm just wasting just a tiny bit of that wire. And I'm just gonna go like that. And I'm gonna do two, just in case I decide to do another one for you, or in case we have a mistake. Never happens, right? Everything's always perfect around here. And uh, just gonna make another one, same way. Get that same size. And cut with my flush cutter. Now I do have a couple little silver scraps, and this is sterling, so always remember to save your sterling scraps because you can recycle those. All right, so two rings, and now I am going to make a bar for my ring. All right, in order to do this part, I wanna have a nice straight bar, and you can see this is just a little bit curved here. So I'm gonna straighten this with my wire straightener. 
because it just looks better if it's a nice straight piece. And now we're gonna measure this three quarters of an inch. And I do have a ruler over here off to the side, so I'm just gonna bring that over. So I measured that three quarters of an inch, and I'm just gonna cut that with my flush cutter. And then I'll do another one exactly the same. All right, so now, right now, if I've tried to put this together, this would really stick up. See how far that would stick up from that? But let me show you my other one and see how much cooler that looks. So here's a little, little, little trick to make this. We're gonna make like a C ring and then we're going to attach that bar to the top of the C as opposed to the O right there. So first step is to trim out about a quarter inch of your ring, like so. Okay, so now that's gonna kinda sit right there. But to solder, you really have to have a really, really tight join. You can't have any air. So for instance, like what you want is the two edges to come together and touch right there. But if you have a little space like this, this it, it'll be really difficult for you to solder. So let me do it this way. So if there's a space, it won't solder. If there's no space, it will. So what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna take my flush cutter and I am going to cut this so it's flat this way on both sides. So I'm not really taking any length off the ring. I am just making this flat so it's gonna lay up flat against that piece. So let me do the same thing on this one. So cut and cut. I also want to then file this so that it's really, really perfectly flat. So there's two ways to do that. And one is just by holding it with your plier here and, and then flattening it up against your file, just like so. If you have a miter vise, this is the easiest way to do this. You just open this little guy up and put your ring through here. Just a tiny, tiny hair stick out. And then you can take your flat file and the metal has a grain, so that one, that grain is going that way, so I'm gonna turn that over. And so now you can feel that's perfectly flat. So that one's gonna be really, really good. So now watch this, that will fit right up against there. And so we'll do one one way and one the other way. All right, so now the next thing is, I've noticed that these look a lot better if you really make a nice sharp end on each side of these, a nice flat sharp end on there. So in order to do that, you're gonna take your flat nose plier and just leave a little bit sticking out at the end. And you can use the miter vise for this too, but I find it's easier to do with your flat nose. And just take off that little end. And don't use a flat nose that you're just totally in love with to do this because this does kinda take the edge off that flat nose. So I usually use one that is not super expensive to do that trick. This is just some 400 grit sandpaper that I'm gonna use because if you don't kinda go over this with some four or 800 grit sandpaper, that's gonna be kinda rough on the edges because that's a, a pretty coarse file that I just used. So I'm doing that too. Okay, so those are ready to go. And that feels good. Now I really like to use paste solder for this project because it almost almost like glues them together when you put that on there. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take my paste solder, and this is just a soft paste solder. And I'm just gonna put a little bit right here on the edge of my board. And that's where I always put mine, and partially because I'm right-handed, because I when I turn my torch on, I hit in this direction, so I never seem to heat up that paste solder. When I put it over here, I've accidentally, obviously, soldered my paste solder to my soldering board, which doesn't work very well. All right, so now I'm gonna put a little bit of solder on, and not a lot, it does not take very much. A little bit of solder on each tip, and then lay it down and just kind of push that bar and see how that kind of holds everything in place, that paste solder. So that's just, this is a good use for paste solder. Not every, paste solder does not work for everything, but it works really well for this particular project. All right, so now I'm gonna do the same thing to this guy. And I'm gonna put a little bit too much on this one just so you guys can see what happens. 
when you get too much solder. All right, so now I'm getting ready to work with that torch. So I'm gonna put my safety glasses on here. Move my extra silver out of the way. And to turn the torch on, there's your safety. You pull that down and you press that button and that turns it on. And this right here is high-low. All right, and then let me turn it over. This right here is your continuous flame. When I pull it back, that flame will stay on and I can let go of that button, which is very important. So now, like I said, I always use flux. So I'm going to heat my pieces and spray some of this spray flux on here. And that's gonna keep my metal clean. Like I said, paste solder has flux in it, so you don't have to, but I think it's a pretty important step. All right, so now I'm just gonna heat my piece evenly and let that solder flow, flow. See it flowed right there? You just kind of make it, just see it kind of go. Just get a little shiny look. And this one will probably be faster because it's got some, picked up some of that heat from the other. Now I want you to see there's a little bit of a solder blob. Whoa, almost overdid that one. A little bit of a solder blob on this guy right here because I used just a little bit too much solder. So I'm gonna put these in something called pickle. You guys see that? There's my pickle. And this is just a, obviously, flame-resistant container that I keep my pickle in. Now, why do I use pickle? Pickle cleans your metal. So, like, you're, I got a little fire scale, especially on that guy right there. Um, so, I'm going to put that in the pickle, and that's going to help take that off. Now, why do I use a copper tong? is because unfortunately if you dip steel or other you know well if you dip steel in it i know it contaminates your pickle and weirdly that will then plate your metal with this weird ugly pink coating and you're not going to want that so copper it doesn't hurt so i'm going to leave those in there and let those clean up just for a few minutes now i like to wear mine super shiny so those two are polished on a rotary tool and then put in the tumbler and shined up, as is this one that I'm wearing on my finger right now. These two, I do not have any rotary tools here with me today, so we're not gonna be able to polish them like that, but I thought it'd be kind of fun to show you guys how we could dip them into a liver of sulfur and maybe get a little different finish on them. So I'm gonna take out the one that looks like it's cleaned up a little bit faster. So I'm gonna leave, I'm gonna let this guy pickle a little bit longer. Generally speaking, if you put a hot piece of metal into pickle, it'll take about, about five minutes to pickle. But if you put it into, if you have the metal cold, then uh, it'll take longer than that. But never leave anything in your pickle more than about an hour because it does break down your solder joints. What I'm doing now is just cleaning this off with a little bit of steel wool, which is another great way to finish off silver if you just want kind of a, a matte finish and you don't have any rotary tools or a tumbler or anything like that. So see, this already looks pretty cute. Um, but I've got like right in here, there's a little bit of darkness, uh, maybe where I didn't get quite clean enough or maybe where that steel wool got in there. But so if we oxidize this, you're not gonna notice that. Okay, so I'm gonna leave that right there and I'm gonna pull over my liver of sulfur. And I've already mixed this up. This is just a, a gel liver of sulfur and I just put a little bit of water in there. So I'm just gonna pop that in there. And while that is getting darker, you can actually see, can you already see it getting dark in there? Pretty cool, right? So while that's getting darker, I'm gonna see what's happened with my other piece that I got all that fire fire scale on. See how it's kind of a little bit pink still? Just hasn't cleaned up. That's fire scale. And I may have even gotten a little fire stain on this, which is even harder to get off, but let's see what happens here. So I'm gonna pop that down in there. Okay, so what's going on here? It's a round ring, it's hard to get out of there. Get in there. Give it just another second. All right, so I'm gonna pull that out and just dry it off on my little paper towel here. I'm just gonna take off some of, some of that, some of that liver of sulfur to kind of give it, and I'm just really, really lightly hitting this with my steel wool. So is that really disguised? And I leave, I usually leave a lot in the joints. 
So you can kind of see the difference. See how that's kind of got almost a gray, almost a vintage look, and then this one's super shiny. So that was lots of fun, right? Kind of something simple, but maybe a little bit more complicated than what you're used to. Uh, it's just a really, really basic way to get started soldering. And I think using paste solder is uh, something that's a little different from other types of soldering, but great for this particular project because of kind of the way it sits right in there and holds your piece together. So, great use for paste solder. Hope you guys loved doing that. Don't forget, I know we need a lot of tools to do this project, but I want to go through them one more time with you so you feel comfortable. We're going to have our sterling silver wire as our supply, and that's all we used. And then we're going to have basic soldering equipment, including a soldering board or a fireproof surface of some sort. You can use a charcoal block. Uh, we are going to use a torch. And then we're going to have our paste solder. This is a number 65 soft paste solder. Our solder pick and our copper tong. And then I, of course, used my flux and I had some pickle to clean my metal. And finally, we did use some liver of sulfur to oxidize some of our rings. Then, as far as metalworking tools, you're going to need a flat file. I used an optional miter vise and also some steel wool and some basic 400 grit sandpaper. And then as far as basic tools are concerned, I used my flush cutter. I used a wrap and tap plier and a wire straightener. And most importantly, I had a ring mandrel. Thanks so much for watching. If you guys would like to pick up some supplies, like the ones we work with today, check out the links down below. Would you like to see some more detailed soldering projects? Let me know in the comments. Don't forget to like and subscribe and ring that bell. And we'll see you again next time.